If you'd like to support the creation of this content, please click on the link below. We are not in competition. It's one vision, one mission, one African pride. Africa, it's a jungle na nani. He was born Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara on December 21st, 1949 in Yako, French Upper Volta, and he was the third of ten children. Upper Volta was a colony of French West Africa, and it was established on March 1st, 1919. This land is now today known as Burkina Faso. While in primary school, Thomas Sankara applied himself to his schoolwork and excelled in mathematics and French. His parents were Roman Catholic and took him to church often. The priest was so impressed with his energy and eagerness to learn some priests encouraged Thomas to go on to seminary school once he finished primary school. Even his parents wanted Thomas to become a priest, but he chose to join the military. During that time, young intellectuals saw joining the military as a national institution that could potentially help to discipline the corrupt and ineffective political leadership. Thomas Sankara entered the Military Academy of Cadiogo, which is located in the capital city of Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou, at the age of 17 in 1966. While attending the Military Academy, he saw the first military coup d'etat in French Upper Volta by Lieutenant General Sangule Lamensana on January 3rd, 1966. Lieutenant General Sangule Lamensana was in power for 14 years before being ousted in November of 1980 in a bloodless coup by Colonel Saye Zerbo. The military officers in training at the academy were taught by civilian professors. Adama Toure was the academic director at the time who would invite a few of his brightest and more political students such as Thomas Sankara to join informal discussions about imperialism, neocolonialism, socialism, and other topics outside the classroom. Thomas also had a passion for music in which he loved to play his favorite instrument, the guitar. Thomas Sankara went to continue his military studies at the Military Academy of Ansarabe in Madagascar, where he graduated as a junior officer in 1973. When he returned to French Upper Volta, he fought in the border war with Mali. He gained fame for his performance in the conflict, but in later years, he renounced the fighting as useless and unjust. In 1976, Thomas Sankara became the commander of the Commando Training Center base in the city of Po, which is located in southwest Burkina Faso. In the same year, he met Blase Compore in Morocco. During the presidency of Colonel Saye Zerbo, a group of young officers formed a secret organization called the Communist Officers Group. Thomas Ankara and Blase Compore were part of the secret group. 
Gautama Sankara was appointed Minister of Information in Saudi Zerbo's military government in September 1981. While his predecessors in that post would censor journalists and newspapers, Thomas Sankara encouraged investigative journalism. This led to publications of government scandals by both privately owned and state owned newspapers. Thomas Sankara resigned in April of 1982 in opposition to Saye Zerbo's leadership. In 1983, Thomas Sankara was arrested along with other officers that were part of their secret group. The decision to arrest Sankara was unpopular with the junior officers of the military regime. This resentment created momentum for his friend Blase Compore to lead another coup. Blase Compore organized the coup that made Thomas Sankara president on August 4, 1983, at the age of 33. Thomas Sankara saw himself as a revolutionary and was inspired by the examples of Fidel Castro of Cuba and Ghana's military leader, Jerry Rawlings. The ideology of the revolution was defined by Thomas Sankara as anti-imperialism in a speech he gave on October 2nd, 1983. Once in power, Thomas Sankara launched a mass vaccination program in an attempt to eradicate polio, meningitis, and measles. From 1983 to 1985, two million citizens were vaccinated. Before his presidency, the infant mortality rate was about 20.8%. During his presidency, it fell to 14.5%. His administration was the first African government to publicly recognize AIDS epi epidemic as a major threat to Africa. He also launched large-scale housing and infrastructure projects. And in an attempt to fight deforestation, he created the People's Harvest a Forest Nurseries Program to supply 7,000 village nurseries in the planting of several million trees. All the regions of the nations were connected by a vast rail and road program initiative that he had launched. He reduced his nation's dependence on foreign aid. He understood that African nations were being controlled by Western nations that supplied the aid to influence their politics. On the eve of the nation's first Independence Day, Thomas Sankara changed the name of the nation from the Republic of Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, which means the land of upright people. Outside of his personal charisma, Thomas Sankara and his initiatives, the administration launch, contributed to his popularity as well and brought some international media attention to his government. Thomas Sankara wrote the new national anthem himself, using his skills as an accomplished guitarist. When he was asked why he did not want his portrait hung in public places, which was the norm for other African leaders, his reply was, there are seven million Thomas Sankaras. On October 15, 1987, Thomas Sankara was assassinated by an armed group along with 12 other officials in a coup that was organized by his former colleague, Blase Compare. Blase Compare betrayed Thomas Sankara and when he took office, he reversed all the policies of the Thomas Sankara administration. Blase Compore 
started borrowing money from the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. Lazi Compore remained in power for 27 years. In April of 2021, 34 years after Thomas Sankara's assassination, Balaze Kumpure and 13 others were indicted in the murder of Thomas Sankara. Then on April 6, 2022, Blase Kumpure was tried in absentia, was found guilty, and sentenced to life in absentia. Blase Kumpure is actually hiding in the Ivory Coast somewhere. He never attended the trial. Today, a statue of Thomas Sankara stands in Ouagadougou in memory of his legacy. We are not in competition. It's one vision, one mission, one African pride. Africa!